cut. Great job, Joy. All right, let's take five. Hey, Jerry, how was I? What? Oh, sorry, I wasn't really watching. Whoa, was I that bad? No, no, it's just your dancing reminded me of something. I'm supposed to put on something for church, and the other people are singing, dancing, playing an instrument, but I'm no good at all of those. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm sure you can do something. Yeah, but all of them are doing something related to music. I, I don't want to, to go up there and do something different. What, what if it's not entertaining? I don't think that's true. I think it is. But why can't I be as talented as the others? Sometimes I wonder, what if I'm not gifted enough? Am I 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 enough? of his love Don't you think he's talented and gifted enough in his own way? Maybe he just doesn't see it yet. I hope he feels better soon and figures out something great to perform. We'll check in again with him later. But first, how about a quiz? See if you can answer these questions about St. Josephine Bakita from our friend Elizabeth. St. Josephine Bakita was born in Sudan in the year of 1869. She lived a happy childhood, but was taken from her family and made to be asleep. That means she had no freedom to do what she wanted and was forced to serve her masters. She was made to walk 600 miles every day in the hot sun. What do you think she was wearing on her feet? A. Sandals B. Shoes C. High heels Or D. Nothing correct answer is nothing. She had to walk barefoot over 600 miles. That's almost like walking around the whole of Singapore five times. After all that suffering, including being mistreated by cruel masters, she was sold to an Italian man who kindly let her follow him to Italy. In Italy, she was brought to the Canosan sisters while her new master was out of town. It was there that she learned all about God. When her master came back, she refused to leave the convent. There was a long battle in court over whether she had the right to have freedom. Do you think St. Josephine managed to win her freedom? Yes or no? She did! And what do you think she did after she was free from her masters and allowed to do whatever she wanted? A. Go on vacation B. Become a nun C. Earn lots of money D. Become an artist Correct answer is, become a nun. She was so moved and inspired after learning about God's love. She decided to devote the rest of her life to serving Him with the Knossan sisters. Towards the end of her life, how do you think she felt about the kidnappers who took her from her family and put her through so much suffering? A. She hated them. B. She was scared of them. C. She was thankful to them. D. She forgot about them. The correct answer.
answers, she was thankful to them. Isn't it amazing? She was thankful because if she hadn't become a slave, she might have never arrived in Italy and learned about Jesus. That's how powerful God really is. St. Joseph and Bakita believe all the terrible things she went through was worth it. Just to know Jesus and to learn about Him and experience His love. Thanks, Elizabeth. I hope you at home enjoyed that quiz and learned a little bit about the incredible life of St. Josephine Bakita. Did you know that this week we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi? This is a day that we remember God's amazing gift of His real presence in the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ. We can receive Him during Mass when we're old enough and be with Him in adoration whenever we need Him for love and guidance. Now let's see how Jerry is doing. Jerry, of course you're good enough. Maybe you're not musically inclined, but... Wait, there's a guitar right here. How high could it be? With the love of God. Maybe the guitar isn't suitable for you. Like I was saying, just because you don't have talents in one way, doesn't mean you don't have gifts and talents. We all have gifts and talents that God has given us. It's just like our five loaves and two fish that we have to offer. Five loaves and two fish. Remind me what the story is about again. Oh, I have a friend that tells this story much better than I tell it. Hello everyone, I am Deacon Simon and come June 24th, I will be ordained as a priest. This Sunday, we hear the gospel from Luke on five loaves and two fish as we celebrate the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ. And the disciples thought that they do not have enough to feed the crowd of 5,000 men and women and children besides. But they offered that five loaves and two fish to Jesus and he multiplied it to feed all of them with leftovers. And the gospel reminds us that we may not be perfect, we may not have a lot, but as long as we offer what we have to the Lord, we can make good with them. We grew up in a society where perhaps we think that we have to be the best, we have to have 100 marks, we have to be A-plus students, we have to be the champions before we can claim that we are good in something. And the gospel reminds us that that's not how God has created us. He has given us talents, He has given us gifts. We may not be the best, but as long as we offer what we have to the Lord, we can make use of them and do wonders with them. I remember when I was a little child in primary school, I had a classmate who was going blind and he would be the joke of the class. Bullies would you know, pick on him. And there was just one day he just turned around and he says, for the love of Jesus, I forgive you. And that simple phrase struck me. And it made me think that, hey, who is this Jesus? That someone is willing to forgive those who bully them for the love of Jesus. And I started to find out who this Jesus is and that's how my own faith grew. So we may not think that we have a lot, but as long as we offer what we have to Jesus, He can be able to do wonders with them. And that's what the Gospel invites us today. So, you see, even if you feel like your gifts are not enough, it's always enough for Jesus because He can take them and multiply them. And He can do great things with them. Hmm, that's a really good point, Joy. I'll think about it. Thanks for the advice. My pleasure. Why if it isn't the superstar of the show, Jeremiah? <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that performance without your help. It makes so much sense. You are so funny. Of course you would do a great comedy act. Right? Who knew playing the guitar terribly would make for such comedy gold? That was so bad. It was so good. He multiplied my five loaves and two fish, all right? Now I know that as long as I trust in him, my small gifts will always be enough. You, you are enough in the That's right, you are 
you're enough for Jesus. I hope you've enjoyed coming on this adventure with us and listen out for the story of the five loaves and two fish in this weekend's gospel. And a happy and blessed Father's Day to all fathers out there. See you next week. Love of God, live, love, live the love of God, live, love.